So, uh, Your Excellency, my dear friend, uh, it's with great pleasure that I welcome you and your delegation uh, to Cyprus. Uh, historical, cultural ties, common experiences, and a shared set of values set uh, the framework for our discussions. We once again reaffirmed the strong bilateral relation between our two countries and our peoples. Relations that have been nurtured and tested under very difficult conditions and which conditions are unfortunately continuing. Today we had very productive discussion on a number of issues. In brief, on bilateral level, uh, the opening of Cypriot and Armenian diplomatic missions is uh, imminent and this is going to be facilitating uh, further deepening of the cooperation and the ties, especially as regards economic uh, and investment. And of course, it would be expanding the people-to-people -people contacts that are already in place. Uh, in this context, I have to mention, of course, the very vibrant Armenian uh, community in Cyprus, which is a very valuable uh, part and element of the, uh, of the Cypriot society. Uh, they act as a catalyst for keeping our historic links alive and our common heritage strong, and of course for boosting our political convergence. Secondly, I updated the Minister on recent developments as regards the Cypriot uh, problem. Uh, it uh, suffices to say that uh, the Republic of Cyprus is uh, extremely grateful for the principal position that uh, Armenia has been consistently uh, adopting as regards the Cyprus uh, problem, a position that is founded on international law and uh, on the UN Security Council uh, framework. Uh, of course, uh, we reaffirm to the Republic's uh, a position that uh, Armenia is a friendly country, an allied country that is being tested, and they have, they have a full and unconditional support uh, it's a position, again, of principle. It's a position founded on the values of the international uh, community. Respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity are not options, they are obligations for everyone and in all conditions and circumstances. Third, uh, Cyprus uh, strongly promotes and supports the deepening of the relations between Armenia and the European Union. We welcome uh, two recent developments. Uh, the assistance under the EPF in support of uh, Armenia, and secondly, the opening of the Riza liberalization dialogue between the European Union and Armenia. It has very significant steps, and you can be uh, certain that you have our full support uh, moving forward on those and on other files uh, that are opening up in Brussels. Uh, finally, we discuss the normalization uh, proper, uh, process uh, between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Uh, we welcome uh, the uh, position that the Armenian government has adopted in relation to how uh, there can be progress ahead. And I want to state a very simple principle. Uh, diplomatic uh, discussion, dialogue is the only way of resolving any kind of disputes. At the same time, coercive tactics cannot be dictating how that dialogue is being conducted. The sovereignty, territorial integrity, as I already mentioned, must be respected, and this is not something that could be uh, negotiated. Uh, full solidarity with the people of Armenia, and you have been trying to support at the humanitarian level uh, in all ways possible and in full cooperation and coordination. My dear friend, let me once again welcome you to Cyprus. It's been a real pleasure to have you here, and I look forward to the rest of our discussions uh, for this day. Thank you. Honorable Minister, my dear friend, I'm very glad to be back to Nicosia in this uh, capacity, in my capacity of Foreign Affairs Minister. I warmly uh, recall my previous uh, visits, but um, today's visit is of particular importance for me uh, because uh, uh, this is the first time the Foreign Minister for me is honored to participate in the Ambassador's Conference and address the distinguished heads of uh, diplomatic missions of Cyprus. Dear uh, Konstantinos, uh, thank you for this invitation and I should say that I enjoyed the open and comprehensive discussion we had earlier today in that format. Coming to our bilateral 
discussions today, I would like to stress the following four points. First, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have solidified our partnership to a point where the presence of um, resident diplomatic missions in our capitals is simply a must. Uh, so I'm pleased uh, to join you in announcing that Armenia and Cyprus will reciprocally open embassies in the capitals of both countries by, uh, uh, in, in coming months. Needless to say that uh, it will further contribute to strengthening our partnership and also people-to-people -people contact. Secondly, where and how to strengthen our partnership. I'm glad to see that the trade turnover between the two countries has been growing during last year, and I believe it is exactly the direction we can and we should work jointly to outline new deliverables and ensure continuation of the positive dynamics. Third, or my third point refers to Armenia's partnership with the European Union. In fact, this is my first visit to a member state of the European Union after the milestone decisions were taken by the EU Council, namely on launching the visa liberalization dialogue with Armenia and providing assistance to our country under European Peace Facility. And I think it is also symbolic, as we are aware of the very supportive approach of Cyprus in reaching these historic milestones. Thus, I take this opportunity to thank you, dear Minister, but also other EU and member, st uh, uh, member state colleagues for the support extended to my country in this path, including through the support of our democratic reforms, which, of course, we are determined to continue. The two decisions taken by the EU Council will further bring Armenian, literally Armenian citizens closer uh, um, to the EU and, voice, and vice versa, but also contribute to building Armenia's resilience and hence regional stability. In parallel, we still have other new items on the agenda while we work on the prospects for the new enhanced Armenian-EU partnership agenda. And finally, the fourth point, we have discussed today also the regional developments and overall situation around our countries. It is obvious that our partnership, friendship and cooperation has become even stronger due to the need to overcome common challenges. We have been closely cooperating and we will do so as long as there are pending issues, including of humanitarian nature, following the conflict and difficulties our people have been facing. We appreciate the assistance Cyprus has provided to Armenian people forcibly displaced from Nagorno-Karabakh. Dear colleagues, as we have proven with our actions, Armenia is committed to peace and stability. In this regard, we have always expressed solidarity with the Republic of Cyprus, supporting its efforts to find a just and lasting solution to the Cyprus problem in line with relevant UN Security Council resolutions and international law. Our commitment is also reflected in the vision of establishing durable peace in our immediate neighborhood, the Southern Caucasus. Thus, dear attendees, uh, I briefed my counterpart on the most recent discussions, including on the importance of signing the peace treaty with Azerbaijan, stipulating the mutual recognition of territorial integrity based on the 1991 Almata Declaration, as well as importance of ensuring the continuity of the delimitation process on the basis of the same declaration and thus the 1991 borderline. I think this position is both clear and consistent, but besides that, it has been also developed further by our proposals of creating mechanisms regarding border incidents as well as arms control to which we have not yet received answers and which still remain open. I believe we should use the current historic momentum to work towards closing the page of amnity and preparing a better future for economic development and prosperity of the entire region, which is an important uh, crossroads. Dear friend, concluding my remark, I once again thank you for the invitation and today's comprehensive discussions and the warmest uh, uh, reception of my delegation. Thank you very much.
Now their excellencies, the ministry, ministers, can accept up to two questions from the members of the press. So if we have questions, please introduce yourselves and the media you represent. Uh, Mario Salamo from Antenna TV. Uh, Mr. Uh, Minister, uh, French and Belgium are ready to evacuate uh, their citizens from Lebanon. Cyprus is ready to operate a STIA plan. The STIA plan has been uh, activated uh, weeks ago. It's in full uh, operation, in full preparation mode. We had all the relevant uh, interdepartmental meetings and we have set out uh, how the plan is to be applied in the event that this is uh, necessary. So uh, as we have done in the recent uh, few months in relation to Sudan, in relation to post-October 7th in Israel, uh, we have been preparing for this uh, uh, event, if it's happening. We all hope that we are not going to be needed, but uh, in the event that this is uh, not the case, uh, Cyprus will continue to act as a bridge to safety and to facilitate the evacuation, the safe evacuation of citizens from any war zone in, in our part of the world. Uh, from the Associated Press, uh, for the Armenian Minister, I'm uh, curious you mentioned well, these developments with the European Union. I was curious whether uh, uh, what other ways Armenia has to uh, reach out to the EU and uh, strengthen its relations with the bloc? And for the Cypriot minister, I wanted to ask, uh, is there any update on uh, the assistance being shipped to Gaza, uh, what's happening there, and what are the next steps, if you could just outline it, please. Well, probably I can start. Thank you for your interest and your question. As I said, the uh, uh, opening of the, the launching of the, uh, of the dialogue, visa liberalization dialogue, and providing uh, support to Armenia under European Peace Facility are only two instances of a bigger cooperation, bigger picture. We're currently in the middle of a process of significantly deepening our relations with the European Union. Uh, uh, we have a par new partnership agenda. We are thinking over and working over new mechanisms and tools that can be used uh, uh, in scope within this partnership. Uh, I would also like to add that the people of Armenia, we do have the European aspirations uh, and the European Union acknowledges these aspirations. So. Uh, uh, now, jointly, we uh, think about and work over, as I said, new tools, new mechanisms of bringing the two countries, the European Union and member states from one side and Armenia from the other side uh, closer. Uh, I would like also to repeat the sentence that my Prime Minister said in, uh, in his speech uh, in the European Parliament. Armenia, from its side, uh, Armenia is ready to become as closer to the European Union as the European Union would consider possible. Uh, also jointly with the European Union, but uh, also with the United States, we uh, work uh, over a, a plan aiming to increase the level of resilience of Republic of Armenia during these uh, challenging times and having in mind the threats and challenges that we have in Armenia and around uh, Armenia in our region. So the processes are going on and hopefully we will be uh, seeing uh, new and new uh, programs, joint uh, tools launched. Thank you. Uh, as regards the humanitarian aid the corridor, uh, I will have to remind that the corridor pre-existed uh, J-LOTS. Uh, we are now at the process we are, we are facing out of J-LOTS. Uh, and uh, there has always been planning uh, uh, in place about the medium term uh, option, which is ready to be activated. All the logistics and all the various elements have been put in place. And 
we had very detailed and comprehensive discussions with partner states about uh, the next stage uh, and we're talking about different ways of methodology for again direct access. All this of course subject to developments because as you can understand uh, the situation in the region in the last few uh, hours uh, is taking a very different turn and that is something that can only affect any kind of planning as to how humanitarian aid goes into Gaza. I conclude by this. All the various methods of sending aid into Gaza have been facing difficulties and uh, this of course is not going to stop us from trying to contribute in, uh, in something that we believe there is serious need and it's only going to get worse. Always subject to what's happening on the ground, of course. Thank you. That's it.